Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Lights On Leader interview presented by the Lloyd D. Levinson Institute of Gaming, Hospitality, and Tourism. I'm Jane Buckinevich, the Faculty Director of Light, and I'm honored today to be joined by George Goldhoff, who's the president of the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City. So thank you, George, for being here to do the interview. Yeah, Jane, uh, thanks for having me. Glad to be with you today. Great. So I'm going to start out with a really broad question that you can answer any way you'd like. Who is George Goldhoff? Okay, well, that is a broad question. Uh, I would start off with uh, the most important thing in my life, which is my family. And I've been married uh, to Justina for uh, the last 30 years. And uh, I have three uh, healthy, uh, wonderful children that are moved out of the house and are sort of scattered uh, across uh, North America. And I uh, enjoy gardening and health and wellness and reading and outdoor sports. And um, I've uh, been a bit of a, uh, professionally, I've been a, a bit of a casino um, hospitality entertainment gypsy for about 40 years. And I've lived in a variety of different uh, locations um, since I've been a, a young man in my 20s. Well, that's interesting because that leads me to my next question. What brought you, what in your career brought you to Atlantic City and to the Hard Rock in Atlantic City? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm delighted to be back on the East Coast. This is my home, uh, this this area uh, from uh, New York. That's where my wife and I uh, met. Uh, she's from Philadelphia. So I'm actually absolutely thrilled uh, to be back on the East Coast in Atlantic City's uh, an amazing uh, place to uh, set up home. Uh, I would say I've uh, always enjoyed every role uh, that I've had, and I've really learned from every role. I started dishwashing when I was 15. That led to cooking, which led to restaurant management, which led to hotel management, which led to casino management uh, throughout uh, my career. And, um, you know, I think I will mention this, most people don't know, uh, but uh, I think it ties in with everything else, which is to say that I um, uh, I never graduated uh, from high school uh, because I was so busy dishwashing and cooking, uh, but I later stuck with it. And I was one of 20 people that uh, was on stage uh, when I graduated with a um, with an advanced degree from an Ivy League school. So I. Uh, uh, resiliency, I think, uh, is sort of a maybe a, a common theme, if you will. But uh, professionally, a couple of highlights in my career. One was when I got to work uh, for Joe Baum in New York, who is a uh, is since uh, passed, but he was a James Beard Lifetime Achievement Award uh, winner, and he owned the Rainbow Room, which was on the 67th floor of Rockefeller Plaza. And at the time was the highest grossing uh, uh, privately owned restaurant in the world. And we did it really with a high average check, although we did have uh, a lot of volume. So that was really interesting and uh, instructive on how a high end uh, facility uh, and restaurant runs from marketing to IT to HR to operations. Um, and that led me to Bellagio, where I had the opportunity to partner with a whole group of amazingly talented men and women. Uh, and when we opened that, uh, I was there uh, pre-opening for about a year, and we opened in 98, and it has since celebrated, I think it's 25th anniversary, which is hard uh, for me to believe, but it really changed the way that developers and operators viewed uh, uh, food and beverage and how they outsourced that. So that sort of changed uh, the landscape. Uh, and one other, uh, I would say, moment in my career, which was uh, very instructive, which was when I became the president and CEO of Pure Canadian Gaming in, uh, in Alberta, Canada. And I had four casinos there. It was owned by private equity. And to accept that role, I needed to invest side by side a fair amount of my net worth and put skin in the game. And I thought that was absolutely a wonderful opportunity to essentially bet on uh, myself and the team that I could assemble. And so 
those were three, I would say, highlights that uh, led me to the responsibilities that uh, I have now. Wow, what a career. And I think it's so inspirational to hear how you started and how far you've come. And I think that's such a great part of the casino industry is that it enables people to do that. So thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Uh, what would you consider your greatest current challenges and or successes? Uh, current challenges is really uh, driving um, profitable market share. You know, our costs are increasing, whether they're taxes or wages or overhead or marketing. Uh, guest expectations have never been higher. Um, uh, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of options. And this market is particularly intense. Uh, I know it always had that reputation, but I'm uh, I'm feeling it uh, mm -hmm. every day. And it, and it really is an absolute uh, uh, joy. It's a delight to be in this market. But I would say that is uh, the, you know, the biggest challenge. The incentives and the offers are richer. They're more plentiful. Capital investment is necessary. And there's a proliferation of gaming on the horizon in regards to three New York downstate licenses, which are imminent. So I would say we're really in this inflection point of uh, trying to solidify our our place in uh, in the gaming world in Atlantic City once again. Yes, Atlantic City has gone through many iterations over the years. And what do you see as the future of Atlantic City? Yeah, I really uh, am optimistic uh, about the future of Atlantic City. We have a lot of challenges, uh, a lot of obstacles, but what I envision is really a walkable, clean, safe, uh, not only entertainment district, but I think we start there from Atlantic to the boardwalk and from Albany to New Hampshire, but it it goes to Baderfield, it goes to the marina, it goes to the inlets, it goes to Gardner Basin. We really have uh, an, an opportunity to uh, leverage all of that. And I see a vehicular and pedestrian uh, walkway greening of open spaces, improvements and paving and curbs and facade improvements and the reduction of blight and if you think about what we have as a natural sort of uh, tourism attraction, which is the beach, the ocean, uh, and the boardwalk, not only through the tradition uh, that we've had throughout the years, but some of the greatest cities in the world have these walkable spaces like, you know, Seattle, Boulder, um, Colorado, uh, um, Memphis, Burlington, Nashville, Los Angeles, Miami, you know, and we have it right now. And that is something that they had to conceptualize and vision and build. And so we have uh, that. So I really am optimistic and not uh, Pollyannish, like, oh, everything is great. Everything's going to be fine. It's not but I see it as upside. And so I think we offer a style of hospitality and entertainment and tourism that is quite unique from our feeder cities in New York and Philadelphia and you know south of us. So um, that is sort of my vision for Atlantic City. Yeah, that that is, we do have so much to offer and we have a lot of great things. It's just making them a little bit better to tie them all together and become a real tourism destination. Thank you. What role do you see Hard Rock playing in that vision? Well, this is really a public-private partnership uh, to achieve these goals, and whether it's uh, you know federal, state, county, local, um, you know politicians, community leaders coming together, and I really think that. Uh, and we have been assisting uh, the city and advocating and bringing uh, different coalitions together to uh, put forth uh, this vision. So I think that's number one. I think we need to lobby and encourage for uh, you know better city management, uh, lower real estate taxes. There are uh, real estate taxes that have certainly driven away uh, developers and uh, people, residents 
uh, in Atlantic City. Um, and I, I think through different policies and that type of thing, we can advocate uh, for that. And then what we do now and we engage in the community uh, for quality of life uh, issues, which I think that Hard Rock uh, globally is absolutely excellent at and in Atlantic City, uh, we're uh, quite good at as well. And these are improving so we don't have uh, food, sca food scarcity or we improve our homeless issue or education or safety and all of those things. So I think Hard Rock will continue to play an important role uh, in that uh, vision for a safe, walkable, clean entertainment uh, district that expands out to other parts of uh, Atlantic County. Uh, but I think that's uh, certainly uh, how we could play a part in that. Yes, Hard Rock certainly has been a leader in uh, in the community and also among your employees. I remember during COVID, Hard Rock was one of the first casinos to be out there giving gift cards to the employees and you know trying to help everyone get through that difficult time. And all of our students that work at Hard Rock feel that that sense of, you know, that the company really does care about them. So kudos to yeah, Hard Rock. Jane, it was, um, I wasn't at this property, but I was with Hard Rock and standing out on the employee team member drive drop off circle with our masks on handing out gift cards and food. And yeah, it was, was so rewarding. I'm really yeah. proud to uh, be a part of the organization. Okay, shifting gears a little bit. What yeah. advice do you have for people interested in a career in the casino resort industry? Well, first and foremost, I find it to be the most uh, incredible and rewarding and wonderful industry in the world, depending on how we're defining it now, whether it's entertainment or hospitality or restaurants or hotel or uh, you know, casino or what have you. Uh, and it's been uh, very uh, good. Uh, to me and my family, uh, I would say two things. Um, I think conceptually concentrating on optimism uh, and looking at the world as a glass half full uh, really provides a lot of creativity when you bring that to the table. Uh, and it opens up possibilities uh, and gets coalitions to yes versus why we can't do something, why we can do something. And the second one is change. Uh, and uh, we're in an in incredible generation of, of change, whether it's through IT or marketing or human resources or finance or competition and operations, whatever that might be. And to learn how to accept change uh, lead change, communicate change, adapt with change, I think is a very important uh, piece to uh, our, our industry, um, quite frankly, probably any industry. Uh, I would also say associate yourself with high quality brands and find a mentor and an advocate uh, that you can work with. It will uh, accelerate uh, your professional career. You know, choose those mentors as someone will, who will hold you to um, a, a higher standard, uh, if you will, uh, and choose challenging, thorny, difficult, uh, complex projects that nobody else wants and sink your teeth into them. And, um, you know, work hard, ask questions, find a mentor, give more than uh, is expected. and this is an industry where you can start off as a dishwasher and uh, the sky's the limit. Awesome. Yeah, that's great advice. Great advice. I was just at a mentoring uh, breakfast where mentors were being honored for their contribution. And it really is such an important part of the industry. And it really does help for you to have a strong mentor. So thank you for that. Pleasure. Any other Anything else you'd like to comment on that I didn't ask about or that's on your mind? I think we pretty much covered it. You know, I will just, uh, you know, close by saying uh, it's a it's a great 
time to be in the casino business with all the proliferation and in internet gaming and sports wagering and uh, bricks and mortar. Uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a great time to be in Atlantic City. I think there's a lot of uh, upside uh, ahead of us. It's a great time to be in um, at Hard Rock for sure. You know, live it with an attitude of gratitude and um, work hard. Well, thank you so much, George. This has been really inspirational to hear your career and your vision. And I really appreciate you sharing your time with us today. My pleasure, Jane. Thank you.